Hello my loves, Tony here with another fun and free crochet tutorial. This one is the Quinn blanket. I designed this baby blanket for an old friend who was throwing an outer space themed baby shower and I'm excited to show you how you can make this project yourself. I love this blanket because it looks way more complicated than it really is and the color options are endless. You can go for a random checker like I did, a classic gingham look, or use up all of your scrappy leftovers for a colorful stash buster. You can also play around with the size, taking this from a baby blanket to a throw or even a king size bed blanket by adding more squares to make it longer and more strips to make it wider. As we crochet, I encourage you to follow along with the free Quinn blanket pattern that's available on my blog, toycblog.com. You can also pick up a printable PDF version of the pattern from my website, toyarncrafts.com or from Ravelry. If you're ready to make the Quinn blanket with me, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. These are small steps that you can take that allow me to keep sharing free patterns, product reviews, and tutorials on my channel every Every single week. Now let's talk materials. The original Quinn blanket was made with We Crochet's Kotlin, which is a DK weight cotton and linen blend that comes in 50 gram skeins. This yarn is lightweight, airy, and machine washable, making it ideal for new babies who live in warmer climates. If you want to use the original yarn, you'll need two skeins each of five accent colors and three skeins of a main color. For today's tutorial, I'm using some DK weight mini skeins that I had in my stash. Here is the original Quinn blanket grid. This is how I made sure I used my colors randomly and evenly. I encourage you to make a grid as well for your colors. I'm also using a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. This blanket is flexible enough to use any yarn. Just make sure you use a crochet hook that gives you a looser gauge so you can maintain this lovely drape. You'll also need scissors and a tapestry needle. All tools and yarn are linked down in the description. We'll start with the first square of our first strip, which is in the lower left hand side of our grid. Make a slip knot and then chain 21. For this demo, I'm chaining a few less. Once you've reached the correct number of chains, find the second chain from the hook and place a double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull up the loop. Then yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops again. In the next chain, double crochet, yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two again. So you're going to double crochet across the chain. If you're following the original pattern, you should end up with 20 double crochets. From here, we'll chain one and turn our work. Find the stitch directly at the base of your chain and place a double crochet. Make sure you insert your hook under both loops of the stitch. We'll double crochet in that stitch and each stitch across the row, maintaining our stitch count of 20. We'll continue working in our pattern of double crochet rows until we reach 10 rows total. If you're going off script and working up the pattern in your own way, you can make however many rows you want. We just need an even number of rows and we also are looking for a square. Here's how to make sure you have a square. Grab the corner and fold it to the opposite corner and if the edge meet cleanly, you've got a square. So now we can move on to the next color in our strip. Complete your very last double crochet until you have two loops left on the hook. At this point we can fasten off our original color and change to our new color. Leaving a long tail, I'm going to yarn over my hook with the new color and pull through the last two loops. I'll then chain one. I will chain one. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Turn my work and then I'm going to double crochet across the row, finding the stitch that's right at the base of my chain. So I'm going to continue in this way, working 10 rows with my second color, then I can change to my third color and so on with this strip. Keep working on that and then we'll move on to our next strip. But in the meantime, let's give some love to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a learning platform for all things creative. Whether you want to learn a new craft, build your marketing or content creation skills, or become your best self with productivity strategies, Skillshare has the perfect class for you. Now with the year coming to a close, I am making all kinds of plans for TO Yarn Crafts to thrive in 2023. That's why I'm obsessed with Skillshare's new learning paths. These well-curated playlists of classes give you an entire curriculum around the topics that mean the most to you. I'm eyeing a few learning paths on email marketing, 
strategic goal setting, and copywriting. Start and finish the learning pass at your leisure, then put all of that valuable information to use in your life and business. Skillshare is an invaluable resource for sparking your curiosity and reigniting the flames of your own imagination. And now is truly a perfect time to invest in yourself with a Skillshare membership. Try it out for free with a risk-free 30-day trial. Find the link down in the description and sign up now. Our first strip is now complete. We started here in purple and worked our way up through red and then blue. Here is a great place for me to stop and weave in my ends before I jump into strip number two. We'll begin strip two with the right side of strip one facing us and then we'll grab our second color. Find the chain at the base of this first double crochet and insert your hook into that chain. You should be under two loops of the chain. Yarn over with your new color ensuring you have a long enough tail and pull up the loop. Then we'll chain 21. Once you've reached 21 chains, double crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain across the line. You'll end up with 20 double crochet. Then I'll show you how we'll anchor this row to our previous strip. Now that we have the correct number of double crochet, we can create our anchor. Find the double crochet directly to the left of your stitches and slip stitch into the top two loops of that double crochet. Next, we need to identify the double crochet on top of where we just anchored, chain one, and we're going to slip stitch in the top of that double crochet. Now our row is anchored and we can turn our work and double crochet in the first double crochet of our second strip. We'll double crochet in that double crochet and each stitch down the line until we reach the end of our row. Once you've completed the last double crochet of the row, we'll simply chain one and turn our work and double crochet in each stitch down the line until it's time for us to anchor our row again. It's time for another anchor. We've anchored to our first two rows, now we need to anchor to row three. Find the top of that stitch directly to the left of the work, insert under both loops, and complete a slip stitch. Then chain one and slip stitch in the top of the double crochet just above our previous anchor. From here, we can turn our work and double crochet down the line again, starting with the first stitch from strip number two. Continue in this way to finish up your first block from strip number two, and join me when you're ready to start the second block of strip number two. I'm finishing up the first block. I just have one more stitch here in this color. I'll work until I have two loops left on the hook from that double crochet, grab my new color, and then I'll yarn over, leaving a nice long tail, and pull through those last two loops with my new color. From here, I'll jump right back into the pattern, chain one and double crochet for each double crochet down the line. Once we've completed those double crochet, we can anchor our row again. So let's do that together. First, find the top of the double crochet directly to the left of the work and slip stitch in the top of that double crochet. Chain one and slip stitch in the top of the double crochet right above the anchor. So you might have to open your work up to see that a bit more clearly, but insert your hook, slip stitch into that space, then turn your work and double crochet across the row. We'll complete this for this block and each block in this strip. Meet me back here when you're ready to put on your third strip. I wanna show you how to join that new strip one more time and then we'll take it from there. You're doing a fantastic job, keep it up and I'll see you in a sec. Our first two strips are done and looking absolutely fabulous. One of my favorite parts about this pattern is the join. It's basically seamless and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So let's go ahead and add on that third strip. To add our third strip, we need to find the chain at the base of that first double crochet so we're going to insert our hook into that chain, make sure you're under two loops, and then we'll yarn over leaving a generous tail with our new color and pull up that loop. From here, we chain 20, then we'll work a double crochet in the second chain from the hook, double crochet in each chain down the line, anchor to our previous strip, and continue in the pattern as we have so far. Continue that for each of your strips and join me back here when you're ready to put on the gorgeous border. So my blanket is effectively done. Yours, of course, is gonna be much larger than this, but for the sake of this demo, I am pretty happy with the three by three square that we have going on here. Now we can add our border. I have my border color here and I'm starting in the top right corner of my blanket. I'll be joining my border color 
color with a standing double crochet, but you can join with a slip stitch and chain one as written in the pattern. For the standing double crochet, start with a slip knot on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook under both loops of the stitch, and complete as for a double crochet. We're going to place two double crochet in that very first stitch to act as our corner, and then we'll double crochet in each stitch across the top edge of our work until we reach the next corner. When you reach your final stitch, place two double crochet in that last stitch. This acts as our corner. Turn to work along the row ends. We'll place two double crochet in the end of each row. So for this row, we can see two spaces for that double crochet. So we're going to work in one space and then the second for two stitches around that row end. For the next row, we'll find a space here and then I'll just work around the post of the stitch for my second stitch. We'll do that all the way down the line until we reach the next corner. Once you've reached the end of that row, we're going to find the chain at the base of this first double crochet, right here. And then we'll place two double crochet into that chain to act as our corner. Now we can rotate our work to work along the bottom edge. Place one double crochet in the chain at the base of each double crochet along the line until you reach the next corner. We'll then place two double crochet in the last stitch of the row. Rotate to work along the row ends of the next side. We'll repeat what we did for the border on the other side of our blanket until we reach the very first stitch of our border round. Once we finish this first round of our border, we'll slip stitch under both loops of that first double crochet that we made in this round. And that completes the first round, which is just kind of adding a base of double crochets around our entire blanket. Let's move on to round two. Round two begins with a chain one and then single crochet in the same stitch as the join. Single crochet in the next stitch as well. And then we'll place a pico. To make the pico, chain three. There's one, two, and three. Then slip stitch in the single crochet at the base of the chain. There's your pico. For the remainder of the border, single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and then do a pico. Chain three, and slip stitch in the single crochet at the base of the chain. Again, we'll single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and pico. Chain one, two, three, slip stitch in the single crochet at the base of the chain. We'll repeat this all the way around and we don't have to do anything special in the corners. So just keep up this same stitch pattern, single crochet two, and then a pico until you get back to the beginning of the round. Once you get back to the beginning of the round, slip stitch in the first single crochet of the round, and that ends our border. You can now lift your loop up nice and high, fasten off the yarn, and then pull the loop out of the work. And that effectively ends the stitching on our project. Now is a good time to weave in any remaining ends. Our blanket is all done, and I have to say I am pretty darn pleased with what we've accomplished today. I strongly recommend blocking your finished blanket. This removes any lumps or bumps from the blanket, adding a level of polish to the work. You can find a tutorial on steam blocking in the top right hand corner right now. Thanks so much for joining me to make this project. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did show some love down in the comments. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. Have the best day and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!